Hello, I'm Sharon Nassar. Hi, I'm Jamie Leventhal, and welcome to the 2012 WHYY Young Journalism Broadcasting Program. Old City, Philadelphia has become known for multiple different things within the past few years, but its trademark quality are the multiple forms of art that have come here. Here to talk to us about the unique art scene here in Philadelphia is Jamie Leventhal. Originally known for its historical roots, Old City has become the mecca of art in Philadelphia. Hi, I'm Jamie Leventhal, and this is Second Street. Even though there are a plethora of conventional galleries on Second Street, you can look down the block and see a comic book store that looks displaced in its surroundings. It made us wonder about the different art forms that have rooted themselves within Old City. Although many may argue that comic books do not count as art, Brian, an employee of Brave New Worlds, a comic book store located on 2nd Street surrounded by multiple art galleries, believes that art can come in many forms, no matter how unconventional. I think art, to me, mainly is something that is like created to either tell a story or convey an emotion. By detailing the progression of a story, comic books serve not only a functional purpose, but also an artistic one. Comic art is mainly being used to tell you a story. Every page is laid out and that's almost like a piece of art and then every panel is laid out to convey you know a movement of you know action. Similarly one might not initially find a cup as an art form but pottery has made its home as an art form within Old City through the clay studio which has been around for the last 30 years. Sometimes people don't think that something that is used is art. Paintings are art, you don't touch them, you just look at them. A sculpture, you don't touch it, you just look at it. But I definitely think that this is, this and a comic book are just as valid as artwork, that, as a, a painting or a sculpture. The traditional and unconventional art forms in Old City have worked together to create a welcoming artistic environment for all to participate in. I think different types of art serve different purposes in society. Um, I think across the board, art's meant to sort of enrich your life and change your perspective on, on life. Local artist Candy DePew has started her own silk screening business in Old City, but believes that art manifests itself in multiple forms to enrich the lives of others. Art is anything because I have friends that are chefs. They are creative and they're artists. I have friends that do makeup. They're creative and they're artists. There are people that build whole cities and do city planning, and that's a creative uh, thought process. I think that art can be anything that you want it to be, just as a form of self-expression. I really believe that artists are at the top of the pyramid and designers and creative thinkers are at the top of the pyramid of society and every single solitary thing they do touches every level of society. Economic, cultural, uh, spiritual, health, everything. And art is a necessity of life and it is something that really is the life force in my opinion. Beyond anything else, these multiple forms of art have become a trademark part of Old City, where even Philadelphians recognize the influence the art has here. Art kind of can define areas, it can define people. I just think everything is better when there's art. With so many different forms of art, Old City has become a great place to explore new mediums of art. Something like music and comics along, you know, sitting right there next to like weird modern art, weird contemporary art, you know, and then like vintage clothing. It's, it's cool to have a spattering like that within a, you know, an art community. With so many eclectic styles coupled together in a small district, Old City has come together to offer artists a chance to display their work through First Fridays, an event hosted on the first Friday of every month. At a certain point, a bunch of us got together and said, well, people are afraid to come downtown from the suburbs. They hear all these bad things about people getting pickpocketed and all that. And we said, let's encourage them to try it. And so we began the open nights of the First Fridays. First Fridays, a lot of people would come down for First Fridays, and that was started by the Clay Studio by Jimmy Clark, I believe, uh, quite some time ago. And all of the restaurants, every single restaurant and bar in Old City has benefited quite a bit. In the end, Old City is more than just a place for art. It has also become a collaborative community for creative expression. There is definitely a sense of community in Old City. Uh, we kind of all look out for each other. Uh, we send people to each other's galleries. If, if somebody comes in here looking for kind of more you know, traditional painting or something that we don't really specialize in, we'll definitely recommend folks that do. So it's a pretty positive group for the most part. This has been Jamie Leventhal with the WHYY Young Journalists.
Well, that was sure fun, Jamie. Did you ever get a date with Spider-Man? No, we aren't really in the same web of friends. <laughs> <laughs> Street artists are an entertaining part of Philadelphia, each with their own different and interesting life stories. Here to talk about a specific saxophonist, Joe North, is Sharin Nassar. <laughs> Do you hear that? That's the jazzy sound of a tenor saxophone being played by Joe North, a young street performer who just arrived from small town New York. Hi, I'm Sharon Nasser, and today we are going to introduce you to a young saxophonist who has dreams as big as his afro. After pursuing music education at SUNY Fredonia in New York, North moved to Philadelphia just last week to continue his education for his master's at the University of Arts in Philadelphia. Coming from a family of professional musicians, Joe has always found a support base throughout his musical endeavors among his parents. Though the distance is far from his hometown, he is still determined to continue pursuing his dream. I, I miss my parents, I miss my friends, I miss my family, but I know that this is something that I have to do for myself and it's kind of a personal adventure. Joe has always been willing to try new things for the sake of his music, including performing in front of strangers. After moving to Philadelphia, he started street performing to earn some money on the side and gain some experience doing what he wants. Well, I've done it once at a blues festival and I made $60 in a day and I was very happy with that, so why not try it again? I felt extremely awkward the first time I played on the street, which was maybe three days ago. <laughs> and I was over in Rittenhouse Square and I was playing there and I felt really awkward and then someone gave me a dollar and that was awesome. <laughs> Some people came up to me and played request, uh, asked for requests and I played them and luckily I knew them. And they were very happy and they would give me another dollar and they'd say, play this song and I would play it and they liked it. Now after making six dollars yesterday <laughs> after a few hours and that's probably not the most feasible option but I'm gonna try. But it's not all about the money. With many inspirational people surrounding him, Joe finds that music plays an immense role in his life, a role that he could never picture living without. It means everything, because I can't do anything else. I can't sing or dance. So to me, it's a language, and it's one of the only languages I know how to speak. Teachers always have touched the lives of students. And when it comes to music, this fact is no different. Joe found his own teacher's harsh words during a scale test to be the driving force to better himself in music. He lines you up and he tells you to play all these scales in different forms. And I remember my group, we did really bad. We did awful. And he went down, our, down the line shattering our hopes and dreams. And after that I said, maybe if he did that, then he must really care about me and my future. So I know what I have to do now. Due to all the great teachers that have influenced his life, North has decided to pursue a career in music education to not only enrich the lives of others, but also have a stable career within the field that he's passionate about. If you want to perform, it is not a stable career to go into. That's why you got to be really good and you have to have constant gigs lined up. But the more stable job is teaching because you have your set year and you're going to get paid and that's the most reliable. But if you want to live on the edge, you could be street performer slash regular performer. I hope to be teaching at a college one day or tour the world and live happily ever after. <laughs> because he cares so much about music education, Joe finds it extremely worrisome that so many schools are cutting the arts from their programs because of limited budgets. Because without them, he wouldn't be who he is today. I think it is extremely important and I'm a huge advocate of the arts in schools because if, if there were no arts in schools when I was in school, I would not be where I am today and I would not be the person I am today. It helps mold people, it gives people a creative output, and it lets people be free. In the end, for any aspiring musician, Joe has these words of advice to provide. Do it. Practice, practice, practice. You don't get better by looking at the instrument. Practice and pour your heart and soul into every note and play like it's the last day you play. Joe is an inspiration for young musicians everywhere. So the next time you hear the soulful beats of a saxophone, don't think of Lisa Simpson. Instead, think of Joe and his afro and crack a smile. This has been Sharin Nassar with WHYY Young Journalists. So Sharin, did you ever end up playing with Joe? No, I never had time to do it. Huh. <laughs> do it. Anyway, thank you for joining us tonight. We hope you enjoyed our presentation. This has been Sharin Nassar and Jamie Leventhal with the 2012 WHYY Young Journalist Program. Well, that was sure fun. Did you ever get a date with Spider-Man, Jamie? <sighs> no, we're not really in the same web of friends. <laughs>